All right, I'm going to be disinfecting my well. Uh, two of the most common problems with wells are uh, bacteria. Uh, you're going to have your coliform bacteria and iron bacteria, usually the most common ones. Um, I have both. Um, the coliform bacteria is from the waste of the animals. Uh, my neighbors here have, and, and a couple properties down, uh, a lot of cattle, cattle and horses and things like that. Uh, and what happens after a rain, that water gets soaked into the ground and eventually makes its way into your well. That will make you sick. Okay, that way you, that, you have to stay on top of that. And you, you can buy these test kits to check for coliform bacteria. And I would advise doing that every, I don't know, every month or so. Just check your well water. Also, um, iron bacteria. Iron bacteria is not harmful for you, but it's disgusting just the same. Um, a, here in Texas, our ground, the, the dirt here is orangey red color. That's iron in, in the uh, soil. Uh, and along with that was the iron bacteria. Um, now, you'll know if you have iron bacteria in your soil, or in your well, I should say, really, uh, if you get a bucket of water and pour water into your bucket, and it should be crystal clear, but let it sit for like maybe an hour or hour or two, and if it gets cloudy and has a yellowishy orange or brown color to it and and it looks like it's got a film of oil on it or or like a colory rainbow uh, um, film on top uh, that's iron bacteria what they're doing is oxidizing the um, iron so um, that will cause stains in your toilets and bathtubs um, the iron will anyways um, but on your sink faucets where the screen is, you'll get that slime on there too. That's the iron bacteria uh, kind of growing there. Uh, so in order to get rid of the coliform and the iron bacteria, you're going to have to chlorinate your uh, uh, well with bleach. Now, I'm going to show you a chart here. And on this chart, you're going to see uh, the well casing diameter and how many cubic feet or is in that uh, well casing. So you're going to see like minus four inches and in a foot of that casing it says 0.65 that's how much water is in a foot of, uh, of that casing. So my well is uh, 300 feet deep. The water line from the surface is 100 feet down. So I have 200 feet of water in my well. So what I'll do is take the 0.65, which, because I have a 4-inch casing, uh, times 200, and I should get 130 gallons of water it's, um, in my well. Now you're going to have to find out how much water is in your entire house. Um, for instance, in my situation, from my well house to my house, um, I have approximately 500 feet of one and a quarter inch pipe. So if I go online and um, use one of the calculators online, and you just punch in your pipe size, one and a quarter inch for me, uh, times 500 feet, and it'll tell you how many gallons that's in there. Then you got to figure out what's in your house. You could just guesstimate, you know, I'm figuring maybe 20 gallons in my house. Then you got to add your hot water heater, so that's 40 gallons. So that's 60 gallons approximately in my house. Um, you got to add all that up. So in my situation, it was, uh, if I remember correctly, it was 272 gallons. So I'm going to round it to the next 100, so it's 300 gallons of water I got to treat total. Now you're going to need uh, a concentration of 200 parts per million to disinfect your well. Um, so what it basically comes out to is three pints of bleach to every hundred gallons of water. Okay, so my situation, since I got 300 gallons, I'm gonna need nine pints of uh, bleach. So if you figure that out, it's like a gallon and an eighth. Okay, so there's eight, eight pints per gallon and I have nine pints, so it's just over a gallon. That's minimum, okay? 
what I would suggest doing is what I usually do is double that. So I'm going to put about two and a quarter gallons of uh, bleach down my well uh, because I want to make sure. It's better to make sure that you're disinfecting your well than not having enough and having the bacteria grow back quickly. So I'm going to show you how I disinfect my well. All right, guys, before you start disinfecting your well, the first thing you have to do is collect water. You're going to need, uh, I don't know how many buckets of water to flush your toilets. You're going to need water to wash up. Uh, and you're going to need drinking water, of course. Of course. So you, you have to buy bottled water, uh, collect some water in some empty plastic jugs or buckets or whatever so you can wash up. Uh, and, of course, you need buckets of water to uh, flush the toilet. So you're going to be uh, basically without water for 24 hours. Now it's a good idea to cover your well, uh, put some kind of temporary cover over it to keep the elements from getting into your well and little critters and, and animals and stuff like that. Uh, if you live in the south, your well head will look like this and because there's less chance of frost or uh, the pipe freezing. If you live up north, you're going to have a different type of well head where it's going to have a cover on it you can take off uh, to put your bleach down in your well. Alright guys, this is very, very important. When you buy your bleach, just buy regular bleach, unscented, okay, just regular bleach. Now personally, I like the concentrated bleach. Uh, the regular bleach, I think it's 5.25% bleach. The concentrate, concentrated bleach is eight and a quarter percent. So it's a little more concentrated um, and more disinfecting power. So what I do, open your bleach up very carefully. Remember, wear nasty clothes because if this gets on you, your clothes will be bleached. And I pour it into the bucket carefully. Don't let it splash. So basically what I'm going to do is pour each gallon into each bucket here and then I'm going to dilute it with water. That's one gallon there. So now you're going to want to hook up a hose to your well and there should be a place for that at your well head. I mean, I'm sorry, at your well house. Now we're going to fill the buckets up. Now, one more thing before you start pouring the water into the well, you want to get one bucket of just clean water. And the reason for that is 
in the event something were to happen, you get it on you and you need some clean water or something, you'll have a bucket of clean water. At the very end, after you're done with this, then we'll use that water to rinse uh, the inside of the uh, uh, casing. All right, now you want to get yourself a funnel. If you got something like this, this will usually just come off and you'll have a hole here. You want to get a funnel and just kind of cram it in there so it stays. Now we're going to get those uh, chlorinated buckets and put them down the well. All right, this is the last bucket. Now what we want to do is get the hose, put it in there, and we're going to recirculate the water in the well and back, you know, up and out back into the well again. Now I'm putting that water directly down into the well and it's going to start recirculating. Uh, this shouldn't take more than 15-20 minutes. Um, after, I don't know, 10-15 minutes or so, smell the water coming out of the hose. If it smells like bleach, then you know everything's getting mixed up really well. Alright guys, now what you want to do is that clean bucket of water you got before, you want to get that, wash your hands if you have to, and then the rest of that clean water, you want to pour it back down into the well. That will clean basically the inside of the casing uh, to get the bleach off of the wires and the pipe and all that. All right. Now we can cover everything back up. All right, guys, now what you want to do after you've uh, poured all that bleach down in the well, recirculated it, now you want to go back to your house and find the farthest spigot or uh, hose bib away from the house if, if you have one, which I do. Uh, the farthest from the well and you want to let the water run preferably on a gravel driveway or something uh, just don't let it run on the on your garden for instance uh, because there's gonna be a lot of bleach in there okay you want to just dump the water out in an area where you don't care basically so my in my situation a gravel driveway is perfect and <clears throat> you're gonna run the water uh, in my situation according to the uh, calculations that I found online uh, that pipe going from my well house to here is approximately 35 gallons of water it holds uh, in total so I'm gonna be running this thing for a little while once this thing once I run the water and it starts smelling like bleach I'm gonna shut it off here that that way I know the the entire line is full of bleach then I'm gonna go to the house and go to the farthest hose bib or spigot which is right there on the side of the house you probably can't see it run that one and that will draw water in from the line outside and and draw in uh, bleach into the house plumbing and when I smell chlorine there I'm gonna shut that off and I know that line is full and I have another one on the other side of the house I'm gonna turn that one on too until I smell bleach and shut that off and then I'm gonna go inside and do it to all the spigots the faucets in the house and uh, until I smell bleach. Once you smell bleach, shut them off and you know all your lines are full. Also, you want to flush the toilets uh, at least one time to draw water into your tank also. Um, 
and basically basically you're gonna let it sit for 24 hours like that way so we're gonna let this run for a while And as this water is coming out, occasionally smell it and see if it smells like bleach. And again, once it smells like bleach, shut the water off. All right, guys, it's been 24 hours since I shocked the well. So all the lines going to the house and in the house um, have been sitting in bleach water for 24 hours. So everything should be disinfected. So what we're going to do now is I went back to the well house here and we're going to flush out the well. Uh, after we flush out the well, I'm going to flush out the line that goes to the house and then the house. So let's open this line here. All right, now what I would do is all the water coming from the well is going to be very chlorinated or very, a lot of bleach coming out of there. So I would pour it all in the area where your well head is, all around that area. That'll get soaked into the ground and it'll kill any of the bacteria that's trying to get into your well. So just in the general area all around here. Now this is going to take a little while, of course. Um, Exactly how much time, I'm not sure. Uh, it could take 15, 20 minutes or more. Uh, it all depends how deep your well is, what size casing you have. Uh, to the, you know, that determines how much water you have to take out of your well. Almost, it still smells like bleach a little bit. And you don't get that slimy feeling on your hands anymore, so it's almost there. I've been doing this for probably about 10, not quite 15 minutes yet. Yeah, it's just about gone. So I'm going to stop this. Now we're going to go to the house and uh, go to the farthest uh, spigot and drain out the line from the well all the way to the house. And then we're going to do the spigots on the side of the house, clean those out, clean the inside ones. But very importantly, um, now all the spigots on the inside of the house, when you flush those out, get a bucket or get a pan or something to collect the water because you don't want that bleached water to get into your septic tank because it'll kill all the bacteria in your septic tank and uh, and it'll pretty much destroy it. So uh, we're going to do that next and clean out all the lines in the house. Alright guys, also after you've drained your whole system out and wait a few days, keep an eye on your uh, sediment filter on your well. Uh, it'll probably get clogged up pretty good. So I, I would just say after a few days, uh, once everything's running nice and clean, uh, change out your uh, sediment filter. Alright guys, we're going to do the same thing here at the house. Uh, if your house is similar to mine, I got that line running from the well all the way going by my house to a spigot outside here to a couple more spigots out here. Now I went to my farthest one away from the well and I'm gonna clean out the entire line from bleach. Now the water's gonna come out brown and really nasty. Uh, but once it starts running clean, uh, start doing the same deal with the bucket, pouring a little bit in the bucket, stick your head in there, and uh, until it doesn't smell like bleach anymore. Now we're gonna do the same thing to the house uh, hose bib here and clean that pipe going from the line, going through the house and out here. All right guys, now we're gonna do the inside. We're gonna do all the tubs, all the uh, bathroom sinks and the kitchen sinks. So.
And again, you want to collect the water and throw it out. I, it shouldn't need much here because I already did the outside spigot so the lines themselves are all cleared out of bleach. So I just wanted to clean that little bit out. Okay, another thing you need to do is uh, take the screen off your uh, faucets here so they don't get clogged up. And then dump this water in another bucket. I got a five gallon bucket on the floor here. You just want to do that until it runs nice and clean, clear. And don't forget to do the hot water also. It may, it may take a little longer because you got 40 gallons there, or at least I have a 40 gallon tank. But uh, yeah, don't forget to do the hot water. All right guys, now that you've flushed the entire house out, you did the outside spigots, the bathtubs, um, all the sinks in the house, uh, the toilets, uh, they say you can flush the toilet, if, if it's got bleach in it of course, uh, you can flush that into your septic tank one time. I personally wouldn't do it, so what I'm going to do is take the cover off the tank, get a wet vac and just suck all that water out of the tank out. Okay, that'll be that much less bleach going into your septic tank. I would wait uh, approximately maybe a couple of days for sure. Uh, after that, you can change your, uh, take the pleated filter out that you put in there before you shock the well and replace them with the carbon block filters that you normally would put. Um, that way you'll know whatever sediment that's coming up from the well will get stuck in here. So after a few days that should stop and you can put your carbon block filters in. And your water softener. I would uh, personally on this particular type, and you should be able to do this with all your water softeners uh, that hold salt, is after you've uh, changed and put your carbon block filters in, um, I would put this in, in service mode, out of bypass and back into service mode. And I would put three ounces of bleach into the brine tube uh, inside the water softener and then start the re regeneration process. And that will uh, disinfect the uh, water softener. All right, guys, uh, thank you for watching. I hope you learned something about shocking your well. It's kind of a big ordeal to do, but thankfully you only have to do it a couple times a year. Um, it all depends if you have uh, livestock, cows or horses or whatever in close proximity of your house or your well uh, and how much rain you get. Uh, so um, thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe and share and I greatly appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you.